Okay. Finally back to the original topic. It's already been an hour. When there was still an infinite amount of budget and time, an animation company called Telecom Animation Film was established just to produce Little Nemo. It was the company that later produced the castle of Cagliostro. Telecom put an advertisement in a newspaper to recruit young people who had neither made nor watched TV anime before. Out of 1,000 applicants, they picked 42. There's a creator called Sadao Sukioka, who made Wolf Boy Ken all by himself. He was once an employee of Toei Animation when Toei made a TV series called Wolf Boy Ken. He wrote the original story, the storyboard, and he drew all the drawings by himself. He made the first four episodes of the series like that. Then he burned out and said, I can't do this anymore. So he finally hired a few staff members. Can you imagine making four episodes by himself? A monster. This guy, Sadao Tsukioka, came to Telecom as an educator of those 42 newbies, and it was a complete elite education. First of all, those 42 members had never made anime or preferably never seen one. They were just good at drawing. Tsukioka gave them a thorough ideological education. He told them, never watch TV animes because they're bad. You will make an amazing animation film from scratch. After he agitated everyone's minds, he said, my job is done and left. <laughs> Now, what were left were 42 amateurs who knew nothing about anime but had high self-esteem. Out of the 42, only 5 were men, and the rest were all beautiful women for some reason. <laughs> so, Telecom went to Otsuka and begged, We've made a production studio to make Little Nemo, but Tsukioka quit! Please help us! So, when Otsuka went to Telecom, he saw these hipsters. Among the 42, some of them were drawing, but for some reason, some were singing. And when Young Man, a famous song by Hideki Saijo, came out from the radio, everyone stood up and started dancing. YMCA. I mean, what kind of animation studio was that? Seeing the disaster, Otsuka almost panicked. And feeling desperately in need to teach them proper animation skills, he summoned Atsuko Tanaka. Do you remember the scene? Where Lupin and Jigen steal spaghetti from each other in Cagliostro? Atsuko Tanaka drew that scene. When she drew it, she had just graduated from the animation department of a design school. It was her first year as a professional. But she was extremely skilled, so Otsuka invited her as the teacher. The 42 newbies were rebellious at first. They said, we don't need to be taught, we are the creators. Thanks to the ideological education they had received, they didn't listen. But Otsuka invited the best of the best animators to teach them almost one-on-one. -on -one. Well, some still quit. But because the students were good draftsmen in the first place, their skills gradually improved within a year. Then, they briefly assisted The Mystery of Mamo, the first feature film of the Lupin series. The main staff of Mamo criticized them, saying, Oh, telecom animators think highly of themselves, but they suck, which was mortifying for Otsuka. But he patiently improved their skills by holding lessons called anime seminars, which he taught as well. Then, Telecom was selected as the main studio to create the Castle of Cagliostro. Well, Fujioka estimated Little Nemo would require another two years to start. That was the main reason why Telecom was chosen. But Miyazaki panicked because he had heard the famous story of how Telecom animators had the worst skills and attitudes. But Otsuka convinced Miyazaki, I'll take care of them. We have Tanaka and Tomonaga. We are also hiring more veteran creators to educate them. Otsuka gave a thorough elite education to the animators to make Telecom ready for a feature film. So, in reality, Kali Ostro was a film used to educate the Telecom animators. The real goal of both Fujioka and Otsuka, the executives of Telecom, wasn't to make Kali Ostro a hit.
But to later make the epic anime film, Little Nemo. Therefore, they planned to enhance the skills of the anime staff by allowing them to have the experience of making a whole feature film, which happened to be Cagliostro. But, of course, Miyazaki didn't want his first feature film to be ruined like that. So, he had to somehow use those bad animators and make the film. Miyazaki had already left Little Nemo, so he felt no obligation to allow his own film to become practice material for those amateurs. The only option left was to train them to become proper animators. Meanwhile, he had to be strategic about cutting corners wherever he could, but didn't want to deteriorate the quality even by a single bit. He cut corners as much as possible while perfectly maintaining the quality. Miyazaki's determination and tenacity led to the miraculous opening of the castle of Cagliostro. Sorry guys, free part ends here. Now, <laughs> I'm sorry. I wanted to fit the lecture about the opening in the free part, but it'll take another hour. So 